today we are visiting the Harwich Redoubt Fort, built in 1808 at Harwich in Essex. Um, it's open till, we're here on a Saturday, it's open till about 4 o'clock. Hopefully we can show you around. This is the place much used on paranormal investigations and is certainly a very historical structure. And we're looking over the moat, which used to be water-filled, and it <laughs> is almost cavernous, isn't it? We go across to the other side. Comes under the Harwich Society, as you can see. Now we're looking over the, uh, the railings at the top end of the fort, down into the pits as it were, which shows you a number of casements that run off from what would have been the parade ground. You need to mind your heads as you go around. I can I've been here loads of times. Oh, have you? Yeah, That's okay, yeah. but I still have to say this. Yeah, yeah, sure, mind yeah. Mind your head as you go around. And you can use their um, viewing platform, their firing steps all the way around and here. The, the toilet's still downstairs. The toilet's still downstairs. Yeah. And there's a slideshow downstairs that is working today that's about 15 minutes long, tells you the history, and now it's been restored. Okay, and it's one household or bubble in a room at a time because the, the rates here are quite high. Okay, okay, no worries. Thank you. Thank you. Not exactly uh, Regency Cannon, but uh, it gives you an idea of the armaments used over the years. This is the narrow bit here. This is the staircase that's going to take us away down to the bottom. So. Off we go. And it should take us down to where all those casements are. And we go around the corner. It's alright, we got a dog as well. <laughs> it's a little dog there having a bark. <laughs> and it shows you the history of the site. Unfortunately, you can't help the lights flashing here, which is a minor irritation, but uh, you can see the inside of these uh, casements. Which are semicircular. And I've been here on numerous occasions for paranormal investigations. I can show you where the traitors were kept as well, and German prisoners. And out here, I was standing on the entrance of one of these casements, and I saw one night, just running straight past here, a white shirt a torso of a man's body, no legs, no head, no arms, and it just literally ran past the doorway. That was incredible. And look, you can, you can have a look in here as well. We'll just go through all the various casements here. This is partly accommodation that would have been used. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Good morning, I'll be here. We all talk like that here, don't we? Where are you from? I'm from Essex. Where are you from? <laughs> Let's go outside. Okay, that was the Devere, and the one we went to was the Friat. So we're now going into the can, which is uh, formerly a soldier's room. And again, it's more 
posters in this room actually but you can see the interior again just brick built casement and it's very cool down here isn't it very very cool quite pleasing actually one poppy's here they're allowed dogs who are well behaved and poppy's just showing her well behaved mode okay well done poppy <laughs> It's not everybody's got a mental dog, is it? And this is the Hankim, the formerly the Artillery General Store, as you can see there. It's very dark in here, so... This is where they would have kept munitions and stuff. Let's just give a look around the inside. It's very dark in here, so it may not come out so well. Yeah, it's different, isn't it? And what does that go off to? Oh, it's just a dead end. Yeah. <gasps> Shall we go around the corner and have a look and see what we got there? I've got a keeping period here. This is the Dow, formerly a magazine. The fire buckets. Again, an identical layout to all the others. This is obviously used for storage, so it's locked off. And here we have a one-handed World War II, looks like an RAF type chap. <laughs> keep mum, she's not so dumb. Oh, keep mum, she's not so dumb. No, she's not. But um, anyway, this is the one of the museum exhibits with mostly toys in here, isn't it? And what have we got in here? Well, we've got some armaments, haven't we? Shells, like a, well, it looks like a phosphorus shell, doesn't it? And then we got cannonballs. Yeah, we have a lot of pipes as well. <laughs> All kinds of paraphernalia, badges, buttons. A lot of buttons here. You're not going to see it very, very, very clearly because of the flickering lights, I dare say. Anyway, let's wander through. Do you like this place? Yeah. Mind you, though, they would if uh, if they were living here, it would have been a lot warmer here than it would be outside because they would have kept it heated. By God, the former soldiers' room. Show you the label. Oh, look, a poppy kennel. Yeah. Actually, that, believe it or not, is an air raid shelter. Corrugated air raid shelter. And again, we've got a little annex that slides off at the side, it doesn't actually go anywhere. Oh, it's, yeah, they've linked it through here. And here we've got um, various uniforms that would have been worn. Civil Defence, they came post World War II. It was a follow on from uh, World War II when the threat then became the Soviets and the fear of nuclear war. And uh, Civil Defence was basically taken from the civilian groups from World War II into the 50s and 60s. And gradually they were disbanded. Oh yes. Oh look at this, really lovely ovens here. Yeah. That's the fire cooking. Yeah, cooking range. It's in a poor old state though, isn't it? Mm. But look at these ovens. And oh, washing machine. Yeah. Fancy doing your washing in there, eh? <laughs> because the spice of that. Yeah. Very strange. Yeah. Wow, look at that. That looks 30s, doesn't it? Yes. 
It's all very heavy and well made. I'm going to this made in China, paper thin. Uh, Dover Court Bay Centre. I went to another cell. Rather charming pack with exhibits here. Another of old radios. This is uh, Bush DAC 90A. I think that dates from the 50s. It's made out of uh, white bakelite. And the others are wooden case radios. This one here would definitely be in the 50s. This is pre war 1930s. This is just post war, the late 40s. And this here too is in the same batch. And you've got a, a fairly early TV over there. This one is the washing, the old washing room. Oh yeah, made of zinc, it's zinc coated. Scrubbing board. Scrubbing board, isn't yeah. yeah. They use them as musical instruments in America, don't they? Mm. An old Singer sewing machine over there. A very efficient heater, those actually are very efficient, those ones. Well, it's electric fire. The old ones, yes. I mean, it's not that old, old, is it, really? In, in sense of the history of the site. Mm. And you've got a number of old typewriters there, portable typewriters. I love this old canoe. There's some stairs there that take somewhere. Yeah, I don't think it's open here. No, it's all, uh, I think it takes you up. Yeah, I think so, yeah. But we, we don't actually want to go up there, do we? I'll show you the cells in a minute. You'll find them quite interesting. You've got graffiti on the walls. Yeah? Yeah. And we're inside another one of the cells. Some nice artwork on these boards, isn't there? from a hospital isn't it? The AK and EP ward, the Alice Groom ward, Whitaker ward, the Nor uh, sorry the Harwich Charity Football ward. What's that honey? The invalid chair. Yes, I would say that the invalid chair, and this is a play on English right, I would say the invalid chair could be now pronounced as the invalid chair <laughs> because nobody would be able to sit on that. That's in a poor old state, isn't it? Well, again, you can see with the yes. the the, the, um, the seating on that. Yeah. Okay, let's wander through. This is I mean, it's quite an interesting place, though, isn't it? It is. And this is all largely built up by volunteers, hmm. you know. So it's he doesn't look too good, does he? Right, so we've basically gone from By God or Dow, By God, Lindsay and Jones and now we're coming into the Rebo. You can smell the food. Yeah, I can smell it too, yeah. Oh yeah, the, the Torna, the, this rescue boat or Harwich boat. Yeah, look at this boat here. We picked up a lot of activity in this room, loads of light anomalies in this room. Yep, this is very haunted, this whole section here. Well, I mean, again, it varies. Sometimes you can come here and nothing happens at all. And other times it seems to go quite crazy. Look at this ship, the TSS Arnhem model ship. Wow, it's a big one. And this uh, American schooner, isn't that beautiful? Oh, a bedside table radio. Again, that would be post-war naval uniform. HMS Illustrious. Oh wow, it's a lot of interesting stuff here, isn't there? Look at that little padded chair there. A captain's chair, isn't it? And what have we got in here? Oh, look at this. This is a telex machine. I, I saw this right, now tell you some history here. 
When I was a policeman, they were still using this antiquated technology for years, and I had to go on a course to police headquarters where I was trained how to operate one of those machines. So, uh, yes, I was a telex machine operator. In fact, if that was still working, I probably could still still use it, but it's not. And this box here is all rusted over. How weird is that? Yeah. And it used to be put into a soundproof room because it was so noisy when it was clashing away. I mean, talk about basic technology. I see those little nooks in everywhere. What were those for? Well, these niches. I, I just think it's the way these cells are designed and they come to a point, don't they? As you can see here. Yeah. yeah, it goes to a point at the back. Hello. This poor chap. He was okay until last week and he lost his head. <laughs> <laughs> I know my jokes are terrible, aren't they? And do we look in here? Oh yes, look at this. It's a binnacle from the Trinity House Vessel Vestal built in 1947 and uh, finished in 1975. So a bit of local history there. Oh, look at this an old railway sign, obviously. Look at this. Yeah, Parkston Key West. I'd love that. <laughs> okay, we're coming out this uh, out of this room here. Some lovely ships in there, and now we're in Groom, which is the cells. <gasps> right, this is the place where the graffiti is. I said, fake, oh, they're all locked up. Oh, great. Absolutely brilliant. Okay. Yeah. Well, you used to be able to wander into one of these cells. They used to be open. But they, they seem to have locked them off for reasons I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to put this camera through and I'm going to agitate it slightly at an angle so you can see. This is the cell. I don't ask me why they've locked them, where they've been locked off. It seems completely pointless and defeats the whole point in coming here. But on the wall there it says England and Hitler together. People that were locked up here were either traitors or they were German prisoners of war during World War II. And some of these men were Irish rebels. And in fact, over the war in pencil is up the rebels. And it's probably England and Hitler is probably by the same people. And accusing the British of being yes men. But if I could just swing this camera around, it's very difficult because I'm actually pushing it through the cell bars. It gives you an idea of what it looks like. Oh, what a shame they blocked it. There's a lot of Oh yeah, the Scots here who didn't want to fight either. Yeah, yeah, they didn't, they saw the war as a, an English thing and, and not necessarily a British thing, because there were a lot of Irish and Scottish, no doubt, and English people that uh, weren't keen on getting involved in World War Two at the beginning. But as the war progressed, I think a lot of people changed their views. Yeah. So I actually can't see where I'm looking now because I'm actually filming through a hatchway. So what you see is what you get. Okay, so that's the other cell here. Bring the camera out again. Oh, it's a shame, isn't it? Oh, we have a margie going on in here. Oh, and this one here. That's yeah, we... an interesting cell. <laughs> oh, this one here, actually. We, we picked up a lot of it. Oh, yeah. oh, the nudes. <laughs> it's a bit kinky, isn't it? Like a serial, serial killer's cell for dummies. Yeah, this cell again. I'm pushing the camera through the, the, uh, the cell hatchway. So, what you see, what we can't see. What a shame it's all locked off. But anyway, there's lots of interesting graffiti, which unfortunately we won't be able to share with you today. I keep playing on about COVID, didn't they, when we're on top? 
And here's some of the graffiti that you're likely to find here. I'll just show you. All you need to do is freeze each frame to read it. And more graffiti. And more graffiti. Oh, what a shame. That, that would have been the highlight of our journey here today, would be to visit the cells. But anyway, it's not going to happen, is it? Okay, this is the shell store. I think very shortly we're going to be back to where we started. We've got a collection of uh, bottles and... glass jars and stuff. <laughs> An old fashioned wooden planes. It looks like a press here. And uh, looks like a funny little dog there. He's up to no good. So yeah, this is like a machine shop where they kept all their tools and stuff. Obviously this is nothing to do with the military. This is what has been added in here as a museum. What have we got in here? Oh, empty, dark room. empty dark room. A little ship light. I can hear my voice changing in here. <laughs> I'm talking like one of those people now that came from the sea. More graffiti. RFN W. Sherlock. Even the time here, 1040. New here. battle. May not see it for the light. Scotland. Yeah. I mean, not everybody who came here was happy. I mean, I know that they, this fort was used for anti aircraft guns during World War II. And there's a prison for. Uh, Oh, let's have a wander through here, look. We can wander into the, the moat, the moated area. Oh, I see where we are. Okay. I'll tell you a story. If you look up at the top, can you see the, the bastion at the top of, the, of each of the stone bastions? Yes. Well, when they renovated this site, they drained this out and they dug it over and they found an entire sh cannon, mm -hmm. a Victorian cannon buried in the mud. And the cannon is now on display at the top. I'll show you when we go back up. Do you want to walk, walk around? Oh, well, you can walk around. We'll, we'll be around here. Okay. As you can see, it's, uh, it's got millions of bricks literally supporting the retaining wall and the fort wall. You just wander around. You can imagine a landing party attempting to take this fort would seriously be impeded by this huge ditch, which would have been flooded I mean, the doorway we came out of was added later, obviously. It's quite incredible, isn't it? And it's hard to imagine. We're actually in the middle of Harwich here. This rather isolated fault. I can smell Indian food. How strange is that? Okay, now we're following around the moat. We should be back very shortly to where we started. I'll show you the structure of the side. And this is the, the bridge that we came across to get in here earlier today.
And yes, we're still going around in circles. <coughs> and look at the wall. So many wild plants have actually found a purchase in the brickwork to grow. Amazing, isn't it? Nature clings on. There's some beautiful flowers here, actually. I think they're, let's have a look over here. And to rhinums, I think. Huh. Oh, wonderful. Anyway, let's go back into the fort. Gonna find the um, the gents. Oh, you're looking at the library. I better show this. Oh, I'm buying this book. You have a thing about books, don't you? Admit it. I do. She's definitely a book reader. I'm, I'm a bookworm. Bookworm. Is it called? Yeah. You're part of a dying breed now, aren't you? Life in the age of chivalry. Oh, well, that'd be nice to read, wouldn't Very it? Very nice, actually. Huh. Irish white ones display. Mm -hmm. I'll just follow through, and then I'm going to visit Lou. Can I leave, leave the camera with you? Yes. You can show people some interesting books. Yes. Quite a good selection of quality books. It it isn't the usual, I would say, not so interesting books. This is quality books, history, autobiographies. Quite interesting. Four paperbacks, one pound. That is very very cheap. You need a bit of a time in here to see all the titles. The Edwardian Farm. I used to watch this as a documentary. If you're interested in history, uh, if you go on YouTube, I believe you can find them. They have the uh, Ruth Goodman. She's she's uh, I would say the main historian, and they have uh, one year that they spend in let's say medieval times or in this one particular one. This is the Edwardian Farm. And for the whole duration of one year, they live as they used to live in that specific um, time. It's, it's quite interesting if you're into that reconstruction type of thing. Look at all this um, paperbacks here, encyclopedias as well. Like I said, quality books. Yeah. Okay, well, I saw some titles. I, I I told them a little bit about certain things here, but oh, good. Now it's all about my business, which is finding books. And we'll be checking the rest of the buildings out. Okay, we on the next door is Peeps, which is the again an eccentricity of the English language. Peepies, Peeps, formerly the ablution room, and this seems to be filled with all kinds of military paraphernalia and uh, Japanese samurai swords here there's some beautiful stuff in here I have to say someone's life collection has been put in here all kinds of military badges model of a breech loading cannon Rifles, obviously deactivated. This is very, very good. <laughs> the Vickers machine gun. Where do you see them? Here. And military uniform, of course.
the effects mostly of a lost empire. And here we have a collection of machine guns. I've actually fired one of these. Let's have a look. These are variations of the uh, stem gun. And I uh, actually fired as a police officer in training. I actually was given the privilege of firing one. They were very basic, but very effective. I think they cost the equivalent of 25 pence to manufacture, which then would have been five shillings, which is really, really cheap for, uh, for a gun. And they were produced in their thousands and probably still being used today. It says here that all the guns here are imitation. That's how basic they were, very, very basic weaponry. And bits and pieces from gas masks. If you ever find any of these old gas masks, do not wear them, whatever you do, they are hazardous. Even if they look quite new, anything from that period are extremely dangerous. I think they contain asbestos, and you don't really want to inhale that, do you? And here we have a number of posters, copies of course, the lifeline is firm thanks to the Merchant Navy, women of Britain coming to the factories, all very strong heroic types aren't they? Geek for victory. And you know even when I look back at this I actually feel the people of this era were completely different from the people that I meet today. These are the people that I knew as a child as I was growing up. A uh, completely different breed, I find, to a majority of people you see today. That is, uh, I believe, it's a West German or East German uniform, but certainly not World War II. Anyway, enough of this one. Model saw. Well, these are the toilets, Bagshaw. And this is the this is where people meet for their paranormal investigations in the canteen. Everybody gathers in here. This is the place where we used to come back to, where we used to share our tales of the, of the paranormal, of uh, things that we picked up or saw or experienced or heard. It's just incredible. Wow, they've converted this into a chapel. I'll have to get one back for this one. One, huh? They've got a chapel. Do you want to have a look at it? Yeah. It wasn't here last time. I'll see you down. There's about four casements along on the on the right. I think Freeze Green is a guy who developed uh, photography in the UK. I'm terrible on this. But I believe he came from the Harwich area originally, or lived there for a while. Anyway, I digress. This is completely new. I've never seen any of this in here before. I wonder where this came from. 
to the glory of God. So many of these chapels have disappeared over the years, and I suppose the remnants of which have come here. And these old people who died in World War II who belonged to this particular church, wherever it was. Oh, God bless them all. Wow, this is incredible. Look at this. <laughs> there was nothing in here at all like this before. This is completely new. It's, all, it's the contents of a chapel. And obviously local, Parkston, because we are in near Parkston, Parkston Quay. And there's a memorial there to a corporal who died in the air disaster in Malta in 1956. What a shame, all this has been taken out. So that chapel it came from has either been demolished yeah. or it's been um, converted into a home. What a shame. And this is what's happening to Christianity in the UK. It's becoming um, more and more of a museum exhibit, isn't it? Yeah. What a tragedy. Nothing in here at all, really. And these are the pews taken from that chapel. Okay, I'm going to choose the ladies. All right. Do you want to take well, copy? Anyway, we're back outside again. And uh, looking at the circle. Oh, by the way, in the middle there, I should mention, is a well. This is uh, the... Carolyn Hughes, which is a former hospital, which now appears to be a workshop. Let me show you. I'll go back there in a minute and oh this is where we started Devere, which is the bedding area. So Fright is probably the last one actually. Okay, we're finished downstairs now. We're going up to the upper deck, which is the, uh, the normal soul level, and wander around and have a look at the, some of the exhibits there, and show you the cannon, which was actually excavated from the moat all those years ago. Okay, we <laughs> it's one thing after another today. Anyway, this is the well which the soldiers would have used to get their sort of drinking water. Whoops. And now we have to go through here. Huh. This is exit, but can you see the exit? We've obviously missed it. Straight ahead. Ah, we turned up the wrong lane. There we are. Okay, we're now heading our way out onto the upper deck and then we will be finished for the day here. Look at these granite steps and look how warm they are. I mean, for granite as well. Okay, I'm just going to take you around very quickly and show you the cannons which are here. You can see this rail running all the way around. The later big heavy guns could obviously be accessed into different positions to defend the fort. But they've got such a narrow field of view and fire. So you've got these museum pieces here. That's come from Great Yarmouth, apparently. And over here are the Gilbert gun. 
<laughs> this was the cannon that was discovered buried in the moat. Oh. I'll show you the plate there. Impressive. That's the shell it would have fired. Yeah, that's this, look at the size of this beast. And this was hauled all the way back to the top from the moat. Wow. I mean, that would have been a big engineering job, wouldn't it? It's a monster, isn't it? And it was never fired in anger. A Victorian cannon. And over the back is Harwich, which it would be defending. And if we go through this arch... We get a great view of Harwich from here. A 12 pound gun here. This is firing cap. And this gives you a fairly picturesque view. Up over the background is Felix Stowe Port. And then swinging around to Harwich itself. So it gives you a really good view of this location. What do you think of this place? And what books did you get? Let's have a look. Always look at your books. Oh wow, Finnish Civilization, that's really good, isn't it? This, this one's very nice. Yeah, so that is really good. Well, look at that. Oh, well done. All the civilizations are vanished. There's certainly description. a lot there to look at, isn't there? Yes, quite interesting. No, it is actually, you've done very well. I could have got four for one pound, but I got two. And just looking over to the left here, this is a, a shell hoist, I believe which they would have um, carried armaments and ammo with. This is um, some kind of interesting place, isn't it? Well, if we just wander round to the other side, then we can make our way out. And I can show you Old Harwich. Would you like to see Old Harwich? Oh, this is the exit we saw, do you remember? Okay, we're going past the High Abdi. Oh look, <laughs> some riot soldiers. <laughs> Queen Street, another big cannon, which unfortunately is covered over. Look at the size of this beast. Why it's covered over, I don't know. And then we just go through the arch. A couple of 12 pounder carronades, circa 1840. 